I'm Nigerian journalist, Dr. Kemi Olunlaya. It is the 4th of November, 2021, and I'm going to update you on the Ikoi building collapse. I have launched my own investigation, which I called IJ Ikoi, Investigative Journalism Ikoi, and I'm asking people to please donate to support my investigation. I am independent. I don't get funding from anywhere. The people that read my stories and my supporters are the ones that fund my work. I thank you for your help. Now, let me recap what happened here. Um, in Ikoi for the last four days. On Monday, the 1st of November, an explosion of some sort, a domino deck of cards kind of collapse of a building. When I turned on the news, I was at home, when I turned on the news and I saw a 21 story building collapsed in Ikoi, I looked at it and there was only two things that came to my mind. The first thing was, is it an office or is it an apartment building? Were there people in there? The second thing, well, that's three in one. The second thing was Surfside, Florida. I covered that case in depth. And some of you remember from my Instagram page, Camille Lunlaya page. Surfside, Florida, where the 12 story condominium collapsed, one side of it collapsed. And we watched that investigation from June 24th of 2021 all the way to the end of July. 98 people died in that and 11 people survived and eight were still considered missing. The investigation was over by the 29th of July and the rubble and the rest of the building was, you know, um, brought down by controlled demolition. This is very, very similar to what happened in Nigeria. On my street last night, I was showing residents this story. I asked everybody to take out their phones and go to Wikipedia and type Surfside condominium collapse. And they were like shocked. This happened in America. We're now in Nigeria, where people say oh, we're not in America. It's the same manner and level of stuff that happened. The structural engineers, the architects, everybody with regards to the building of the Surfside condominium are still alive. This is the difference. People had moved into the building. And then you have people who can be prosecuted, go to jail, explain what happened. And even if you look at the Wikipedia article, it says caused by the water in the swimming pool, okay, and the way they have the swimming pool deck on top of the garage downstairs, underneath, under, under, you know, ground garage, a lot of the water was seeping through that panel and it was causing a damage to the roof of the garage and also shaking the foundation, basically. This building was built in 2016 and completed in 2019. But in 2018, they found out that the Surfside condominium had a problem on that area where that pool was. They discovered what the problem is and they put out $15 million to fix it. But nobody ever started that project. In 2019, these condominiums were sold and people moved in. And you have that $15 million gone. In the article, it says caused by what are these foundation that and corruption during construction. This is what I'm looking at. Governor Sonwalu has established a panel, an investigative panel, and I'm very disturbed at the panel. The panel had to swore on secrecy. They had one or two swearing on things, but one was an oath of secrecy. This happened at the judicial panel for SARS, and one of those young people, Renu, said she's not going to sign it. There are issues with oath of secrecy in Nigeria. It can be a good thing and it could be a bad thing. A good thing in the you know sense of if you tell the media certain things, it could be compromised. They'll twist it around. Bad thing because you need transparency for the people, especially the victims and people who live in that area. Okay, so someone who has you know put together the panel, the swore oath of assurance, secrecy, everything. They've snapped their pictures. All the official stuff is done. Get to work. Where are we today, day four? Going back to Florida, Surfside, Florida, a lot of people died over there. Eventually, the whole debris and everything was moved, and the whole place is not going to be a memorial. A judge has ordered them to sell the property to a developer, but the proceeds of that money must go to the victims. So that whole area is useless. Now, let's go back to Nigeria, where we are. The situation cannot be finished in this one video. I'm going to do a series of videos every day until this investigation is over. Okay, my brother's death really, you know, affected me this year. I said I was going to mourn for 40, 40 days and it's now 40 days. And I also said I wasn't coming back to work for the rest of the year after my Instagram page was disabled for spamming. At the end of the day, 
I'm still fighting Instagram to get my page back. But while that's happening, I've opened my old Canadian page at Kemi. <clears throat> at Kemi Olunlo is my, the one that's disabled at Dr. Kemi Olunlo on Instagram. So my fans, I have the most fans on Instagram, half a million. So, and it was a verified page too. So people can at least know what's going on on that Instagram section. Facebook, I'll be updating. YouTube community, I'll be updating. Twitter is really my office where I'm going to start the tweets and post it on YouTube, Instagram, you know, everywhere. Um, Snapchat, Facebook, everywhere. So that you can know what's going on and how investigative journalism works. I told you guys that Hum Angle, Premium Times, Guardian UK, everyone asks for monthly donations for his investigative journalism. There's somebody in America, an American who actually sends me $100 to support my work every month. And that's really good. There are others who are supporting my work and there's the ordinary Nigerian who's sending a thousand, a thousand Naira a month just to support me. Investigative journalism is expensive. Just getting out of here the Sangote Edo Aja area, just to go to Ikoi every day or every two days, is ten to 15,000. Yeah, 5,000 for the Uber to take you there. When you're coming back, you might be in traffic. When you're even going, you might be in traffic. So that's just for transportation. Time, energy, and money. I need interns to video me when I'm doing reports. I need to file stories right away. I can't be at the site and the IGP shows up and I'm not ready and I've not filed all the videos I took. It is hard work and I'm very old. I'm going to be 58. Sometimes you might do a story on a Monday. You have not posted it till Wednesday. Everybody sees it on Wednesday. Those are old news. They've seen it elsewhere. It's very important. What differentiates me from what everybody else is doing is the facts that I'm giving you straight up information the panel may not have access to. I'm talking to many witnesses behind the scenes. Today alone, Thursday, the 4th of November, I have gotten calls from attorneys, family members, different people. And that information has to be investigated and corroborated with what's going on. Even the panel is going to be watching my work. Okay, with their oath of secrecy, which I'm not happy about, because really, I can understand how media twists things up, but the people need to know things, okay? Judicial panel for SARS came up with their own recommendation, okay, halfway, but it's not finished yet, okay? But at the end of the day, we're hearing from the federal government that, okay, there was never a massacre. I did not find people that died. I could not locate one person. I chased bodies everywhere, but I located a lot of people that were shot and people are not focusing on those people that were shot and the people shot were not even focusing on reporting the government and the army to places like the human rights organizations and the ICC. Everybody's just shouting online. You need action. So on the next video, I'm going to tell you the players because as of today, okay, I went to Korea and I'm back. As of today, Okay, the time is almost 1 p.m. in Lagos now. There's still no professional presence at the scene of the building collapse. When I say professional presence, we've seen the governor, we've seen the IGP, we've seen people, but we have not seen anyone related to the owner, the construction, Femi Oshibana owned four score homes. Okay, Wale Bob Oseni was the developer. That's what we hear. But there has to be other key people Nobody from their companies, both of them, have showed up. Are they scared? Are they scared of arrest? Are they distraught? Are they mourning? There's a lot of factors going on. But journalists continue to stay that around the clock. I cannot stay there around the clock. I work for myself. I have no staff. I have one or two interns that will help me, university students, they'll help me do one or two thing, things. And I don't pay them. Okay, when you donate to me, that's when I help them with transportation, food, and other things. They don't have salaries with me. So please consider donating to First Bank 2007-477-948. I've done several investigations in Nigeria since 2012. The Koza one, the Leki massacre, the Jibanj one, the Kashi one with... Um, the guy that fell off the roof. I've done quite a lot of investigations and everything I do comes out true. Okay, so make sure you donate and help. I'm Dr. Kemi Olunlayer. The next video, I'll have some details of some of the findings I've uncovered on this case. Thanks for watching.